Today in Chris Performance Repair, we're going to go ahead and address this 2014-2015 Chevy pickup that has a lifter tick is what it sounds like, but we are not sure what it is yet. Now, it's much quieter than the typical one that I have on my channel where we have a collapsed lifter. So I do not believe it's a collapsed lifter, but I could be wrong. It's also not having a solid misfire and there is a misfire on cylinder three, which is a non-AFM cylinder. So we're gonna go ahead and dive into this vehicle and try diagnosing where that sound is coming from. Stay tuned. All right, so you can see I have these plastic covers off here already. I also have my stethoscope at the ready. Uh, I have already kind of listened to this, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you what I do when I listen to it and uh, how I go about listening to it. And then I will try and get you guys a better version of the sound with my microphone on the camera. See if I can pick up the sound really good for you guys. And uh, then we'll take it apart. So basically, when I start this thing up, what I do is I take this stethoscope and I start listening around. So I'll throw it on my ears and then I will... Use This is a special mechanics style stethoscope with this little prodder thing here. But I'll take this guy. I'll go ahead and throw a link in the description. I throw it on different parts of the valve cover. And I listen to the sound. Now, the particular sound on this engine is a much slower tick, which tells me it is a valve train tick. It does sound like a lot of it's coming through the bottom end. Now, with engines and engine sounds echoing occurs so you might think it sounds like it's coming from over here or over there or somewhere on the bottom but things echo through metal so that's why this thing has a nice metal rod for example uh, when the sound hits here it will travel down this metal tube hit the diaphragm on this end and then go through the hose so this thing is a prime example of the echo of the sound going through now i also took the first thing I did and took this off and basically this is just an open end and it acts as a way to kind of isolate what location the sound is loudest. So I take this thing and I kind of point it at different areas. I run it around and I listen to where the sound is coming from. And if I put it on the bottom of the motor, near the bottom of the motor, it's really loud in the oil pan area. And it's also really loud up in this area here. So. Like I said, I don't know, is it coming from the top or the bottom? And that's why it led me to grabbing this thing and doing that. And I've isolated it to, I believe, the top of the engine. Plus, if it was on the bottom of the engine, it would be going a little bit faster tick sound. So with that, let's go ahead, get you guys a good audio version of this sound um, with a little bit of video showing you where the camera is. Now the microphone on the camera is directly above you guys. So it's, it's actually, I'll go ahead and show it in the view there. It is a fuzzy microphone and that kind of eliminates the noise from any fans or anything that's gonna be going by. So hopefully we can pick up the sound well. And uh, with that, let's go ahead and listen to this thing. I'll go ahead and fire it up, leave you guys right where you're at so you can hear what it sounds like outside the vehicle. Now I'm gonna let the idle down, go down a little bit. I'm also gonna turn on a fan, but the audio should be able to avoid picking that up too loud. That fan is just to keep fresh air coming in the shop, so any of the exhaust fumes that escape out of my hose I have hooked up will end up pushed out of the shop because of the fresh air that's coming in through my filter system. Okay, so it's idling down now. Can you give it a minute just to idle down a little more? All right, we have the truck idled down. I should probably push that in. That popped off with the cover here. Um, oh, it's even idling down more yet. All right, so you can hear how slow that tick is. Tick, 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 tick. Uh, that is definitely a top end tick. Now, if it was ticking twice that speed, it would be a bottom end tick. So the speed of the tick is critical here in diagnosing where that noise is coming from. If it's on the top end of the motor, it's moving at half the speed of the bottom end of the motor. And if you actually take a look at the crankshaft rotation and kind of judge how fast that thing's going, that will not match the tick that is on the top of the motor. However, if you were to put a 
an ignition pickup light, like like for setting timing, ignition timing, on one of these coil wires, you could actually match that speed to what's going on on the deal, as long as it doesn't have a waste spark system. And I do not believe these have a waste spark system. I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure they don't have a waste spark system on this particular motor. So let's go ahead and bring the camera down there. So this side is substantially quieter than the other side, so we know that it is on this side over here, most likely. Now, just for, just because, we're gonna go ahead and take you to the bottom, so you can hear how loud it is at the bottom of the motor as well. We're gonna go in on the driver's side here. So you can see the oil pan and the transmission there. We're going to go ahead and go closer. Now I'm at about an equal distance to what I did to those valve covers. And the sound is actually louder down here. But I do not believe, again, that it is down here. My next step is going to be pulling this valve cover off. Why am I choosing to pull that valve cover off? First off, the speed of the tip. I believe it's on the top, regardless of how loud it is on the bottom. One other thing you could do as a potential next step would be pull the oil filter, cut it open, and see if there's any metal in it. I'm not going to go that far yet. First, because I don't have an oil filter sitting at the ready. But second, because I still believe it's up here. And since I hear it in the bottom, it might actually be all the way down at the camshaft at the lifter area. Plus, I want to see how dirty this engine is. So if I pull this oil cap off and I look down in this hole, it's actually, it looks like it might be a bit of a dirty engine. If that's the case, it might be worth doing an ATF flush too. This valve cover does not take very long to pull off. So I'm gonna pull the valve cover off and bring you guys right back to take a look at what it's doing underneath that valve cover, what it looks like. And we're probably gonna do a slow-mo video where I record the noise in slow motion on my cell phone. And the reason I choose to do that is to try to pick up what cylinder exactly the noise is coming from. And then we can continue on beyond that point to try and identify the noise exactly and pinpoint where exactly it is. So I'm going to get this off and be right back. All right, I think I'm ready. I got this tin shield here for minimal oil splash control. Hopefully it doesn't rub on the valve spring in the back. It's kind of close. But I'm going to go ahead and fire this up and see what, what's going on here. I have this guy ready in slow-mo mode. Now I have it on eighth time speed. That's the fastest this thing can go with this old school phone. But I'm gonna go ahead and fire it up and hopefully it runs good enough to be smooth-ish and I can get an idea of what's going on with that noise. So I'm gonna fire it up and see what happens. Oh, there's no oil spray, so I'll take that off. And then I think it sounds like it's that one there. So I'm gonna go ahead and start this and be quiet for a moment and put this on the screen for you guys. Alright, I'm putting my hands on the rockers and I noticed something. This one, I can feel something nasty when I put my hand on it. The rest of them are nice and smooth, so I'm pretty confident it's this one here. I just got my finger pinched. So this one here definitely has something weird going on. I'm going to go ahead and pull the rocker off of this slot here and take a look at the push rod, the rocker, the rocker tip, the, the whole valve train that I can see here. I may have to go deeper. It might actually be camshaft damage. So let me pull that off and I'll be right back. So I did not find anything obvious on the push rod or the rocker arm. So it's definitely going to be down lower. So what I'm going to do is just to make sure that it's not like a completely junk cam lobe or something, which I have a feeling it is, 
is I'm going to go ahead and put a dial indicator in here. Rather than tear this all apart, I'm putting a dial indicator on the end of the push rod. I have it set to zero. Uh, I also, since I have a magnetic, if this helps you, I don't know, but I have a magnetic dial indicator set up because I don't like those ones with the flimsy bar thing. I just don't trust them. But anyway, I bolted on a harmonic balancer puller onto one of the valve cover bolt areas and then just magnet it to the the pulley puller thing majig. So I have that attached now. It's nice and solid and I have the dial indicator sitting on here. I'm going to go ahead and turn the motor over. I centered the push rod as best I could and then I lined up this dial indicator as best I could to be straight in line with the push rod. I think it's a little off maybe but not enough to cause a big difference. I'm going to measure the total amount of lift on here. Then I'm going to go to the exhaust on this first cylinder here because that one did not appear to have any problems and I'm going to measure it and then I'm going to compare the two results and I will be right back. So basically what I do is I turn this over until it moves and it moved a little bit. Now it's going back but it's going to come back around. There it goes. So it had a little dip in the cam lobe there. That's okay. That's kind of normal for some cam lobe profiles. We're going to go around. There's one revolution. So I'm going to continue to do that until I figure out the exact amount of lift and then I'm going to compare it to the other one. So I decided to show you guys what's going on exactly. So I have the dial indicator in the camera here and as you can see it is spinning around and it will get all the way to above 270 thousandths of lift and it does not have any weird dip or variation in the way that it goes up. And so this one is the good one. We're going to go ahead now, go to the bad one. And as you can see on the bad one, there is a dip at one point while it is rotating around. And then this one also does not get quite as much lift. Now what does this tell me? This tells me that one of the lifters has a flat spot on the roller of the lifter with that little dip that's in there. And it also has a worn cam low because it doesn't have quite as much lift. So. Now I have confirmed that we do have to go in to do major surgery on this thing. So we will have to dive into that in another video. But at least now you have an idea of what is going on with this particular engine. And that is how you would diagnose a noise that happens to be similar to this um, as far as the steps that I take to do so. And now you have an idea of what to look for to further diagnose it if you happen to have a worn cam lobe, how to discover whether you have one or not without taking a ton of the vehicle apart. So with that, like, share, subscribe, and as always, hope to see you on the next video. Thanks for watching.